Okay, so now I'm going to start the program. And we can go ahead and take a look at the breadboard now. So if we move a little bit closer to here, we can see that it starts with a zero. And we're just gonna go a quick run through with the wheel onto the breadboard. So we are going to just spin it a little bit. So now we see that the LED did light up. So that's part one. And now we're gonna show that the speed is increasing when we move the disc really fast. And we have a speed of 4.336 miles per hour. And we're gonna show it going slow now. And there we have 2.146 miles per hour. So that is slower than the faster one. And we're gonna start from stop to spin here. And we saw that it went from 0 0.5 to 1.7. Okay. And so with that, I'll also show the pin 1.1, changing this from miles per hour to um, kilometers per hour. So the value did change, and that's because when you click this button, it's gonna input the previous value that was in here. Um, but after after four clicks, it's going to populate the whole array so that the average will always stay the same. So now this is kilometers per hour because you'll be faster in kilometers than in miles. And this one's miles per hour. And we can just see that it's always going to be the same. And now we can go ahead and answer the questions as well. If I can get to it. So for question one, we're going to mainly be looking at the data sheets for this um, to be getting the R1, which was the infrared LED. Uh, we would get the forward voltage and then divide that by the current that they used as well. And we can go ahead and take a look at here. I have it written down. It had a 1.2 voltage and a 20 milliamp current, which leads out to be 60 ohms. And then the second one, you want to get the saturation voltage, which was 0 0.1 with a current of 100 microamps. Um, and then that turns out to be 1,000 ohms. And that's pretty different from what we have because we currently have a 300 ohm resistor with a 10k ohm resistor. Um, so about five times smaller for the LED and then 10 times smaller for the transistor. Um, but let's go ahead and move on to question two. So question two is, what is the maximum time between two holes that you can measure without having to count how many times the timer overflows? So the maximum time is going to be however long we had the timer configured, if I can find my mouse. So over here, we have a divider of one. So this is counting up to 65 thousand ticks and 65,000 ticks is two seconds so within those two seconds you won't have an overflow but once you get an overflow or once you pass the two seconds you're gonna get an overflow so three converting this number into corresponding speeds in miles per hour so with that if we have a two second one, so that is the slowest we can go, it would be 0.145 miles per hour. Our resolution of the measurement is one over the frequency. And since we had a frequency of 62,000 or 65,000, one over that would be 15 microseconds, which is stated in here. And then number five, convert this number into speed, miles per hour. 
So it would be very similar, the fastest miles per hour. We, instead of instead of implementing the number of ticks, like in here, we have it, the number of ticks divided by, or no, no, sorry, the speed divided by the number of ticks. But since we want the fastest time, we're only going to do one tick. So it's just be the speed, which is 9,513.89 miles per hour. And the formula for, uh, for question six, the formula we used, I used, was you get the distance of our circle, which is this. And the distance was the circumference divided by four, so two pi r over four. And then we multiply that by the time, which we wanted to convert to hours. So we would do 3,600 seconds divided by hours. And then we also wanted miles instead of inches because the distance of the circumference was in inches. So you did one mile divided by however many inches in a mile. And then divide all of that by the difference in ticks from the timers. And here is the circuit again. We can just see that even with our finger. And we can see that how slow we're going, it's the timer is going slower. And that's it.